Welcome to another video. Today this video is for people who are more spiritually inclined, meaning they're interested in spirituality, either have been interested in spirituality for a long time, or just starting out and getting interested in this whole uh, topic and subject. And what I want to talk about today is especially what can happen when we go through a spiritual journey and how certain ideas and beliefs and concepts that we use that are, are useful uh, can get actually us stuck and become dogmatic. This is also actually hampering, well this is hampering our growth, spiritual growth, but it is also preventing spirituality to become more widespread because well, dogma doesn't really do well. So what happens? Well. When you go through spirituality, and especially if you go through uh, a non-dual path, which is an investigation of reality and what is reality, you will come across certain teachers who are using tools, who are using ideas to show you actually that there is no independent physical reality. One of the masters in this is Rupert Spira. I can highly recommend him. And so you go through a series of exercises and investigations. And I'm not going to lead you any of those. You can find them yourself. Uh, however, I can give you kind of a, an idea of how this kind of works. So, for example, one of the things that is often stated or looked at is, well, can you find a independent physical reality that has not been observed, independent of an observer? Everything that has ever been known has been observed, has been known through the human nervous system, which is correct. Anything you can talk about, you have to know, so it, you have been part of it, you have been observing. Which means, well, where's the independent physical reality? We can actually find it. An independent physical reality is a belief. It is something that we're asserting, but we can't actually find it. We can't actually find it in our direct experience. And this is what non-duality is really doing, is looking at direct experience. Experiencing now, here, without any of those concepts and ideas layered on top. For example, I am a human being is a concept, is an idea. I have been born is a concept, is an idea. I will die is a concept is an idea. Anything that we will refer to through using words are concepts and ideas. And often those concepts and ideas frame how we are interacting through and in life. And so by questioning them very deeply we start to realize well actually they are assumptions. So they are very useful, they have been very useful for me. And I start to realize holy shit I am believing in independent physical reality, but actually it could also be all a dream. You don't actually know that this isn't a dream. And you can't really prove that it isn't a dream. You can't even prove whether this is a computer simulated reality. You can't prove whether this is, whether actually your brain is, you know, in some mad scientist lab. They're all possibilities, they all could be true. We don't actually know. But you see, this is actually a very profound shift in perspective, at least it was for me, because we come into this world and we believe then how this world works by other people telling us. And those assumptions are very deeply ingrained in us. And when we question them, when we have something like non-duality, which is very powerful and very potent, and I can highly recommend that you go through this and you know investigate it yourself, it, it, it really made a big, big difference in my life. However, the issue starts then when we start to take those new concepts and we think, this is how it is. This is how reality is. It is consciousness. It's all just consciousness. And while we can have a direct experience of everything being consciousness, it does not necessarily mean that this is how reality really is. 
we don't have to make metaphysical claims in spirituality. I know that large parts of spirituality are operating this way, that actually uh, mystics have been trained in their tradition to make metaphysical claims. But making metaphysical claims, you have to know the whole. You have to know everything, and that's a lot to ask. I don't know if there's anyone who can really do that, because everything will come through your nervous system in some way. Right? And if you say, well, there is no nervous system because there's only consciousness, point taken. You can look at it this way as well. And yet, we can't be certain. Because direct experience, my direct experience, is that the sun comes up and it goes down and it goes around like this. It goes around like this. That is my direct experience. And so I can come to the conclusion that the sun is going around the planet. I could also have the conclusion that the sun is being pulled across the sky by a cart and by horses, fire horses. That could be my, my conclusion. They are conclusions, they are ideas. And so direct experience is not direct experience anymore if we have a conclusion about it. And why is this a problem making those kind of finite, clear conclusions? Because they limit us, they close us down. We close, actually. We close ourselves down and think, now this is the way it is. And as soon as we think this way is the way it is, we attach. And we start to defend it. And we start to think this is how reality is. We start to mistake the concepts, the conclusions for reality itself. And concepts, as useful as they are, I'm not making an argument against concepts here. They're very, very useful. As useful as concepts really are, they will never be, they will never, never be what really is. It just doesn't work this way. Your steak on the menu is not the steak. Your conclusions about reality are not reality. And this is where people get stuck. They think, oh, I've seen something, I've realized something, I'm there, I've got it. This is it. But all we have done is we've shifted beliefs. We may have shifted beliefs and we may have had real insight or have a lived experience of that. But still, there is some kind of attachment to a belief to a conclusion to a concept and then we get stuck we have to get stuck because attachments leads to stuckness because everything is in flow nothing is concrete and solid and how things are this kind of thing this is how it is it's fabricated by the mind now there's concepts that are closer to reality and more useful and they will serve you better than others knowing relativity is going to be very useful if you want to have TVs and satellites and all of these kind of things you're not going to get very far with the Newton kind of perspective so in that way they've been they, this kind of perspective is very useful and this kind of concepts are very very useful but we mistake them. We mistake them for reality. And it's the same thing with spirituality. And spiritual seekers and spiritual finders start to believe that what they are seeing is the only truth. And then they listen to someone else who's supposedly a finder. And this finder talks differently, has maybe a different kind of insight than they had. They phrase it differently. And they believe, well, this person's not quite there yet. Or they're just wrong. And it's funny how the mind just keeps wanting to attach and it keeps wanting to make sense and it keeps wanting to say, well, this is how it is. So if you're embarking on this journey, it is the most rewarding journey I can tell you to ever embark on. It is really, really profound and vital in someone's life. It gives a complete new dimension and a different way of being in one's life and it seems to be bottomless 
seems to be bottomless and a lot of things can dissolve when you go on to this journey so it's absolutely worthwhile hands down one of the m most important things you can ever do and make sure you don't get stuck if you have a realization of oneness this is not it it's not the end you have a realization of nothingness everything is empty that's not all you haven't seen everything we come always to premature conclusions and we can just hold off from making conclusions it will really help it will really help on this journey and also trust always yourself follow your instincts especially if you're going on a spiritual journey don't give away your responsibility to a guru and think they know better it's your life and they can't make it happen for you only you can investigate this and see what you're going to see by yourself gurus and teachings and books they are useful pointers so take them as pointers and not as absolutes because they are not the absolute and also as much as we're going out almost of our humanness into this infinite nothingness we also need to come in and embody that in our physical life so spirituality is not about bypassing life life that you got right here right now is the most important thing this moment is all we have got it literally is all we've got and so when you find yourself hiding from life through spirituality i think that's a good wake-up call and come back to what is here now and what needs your attention so for me spirituality actually encompasses Pretty much everything that we do on this planet humanity being human falling in love having children working they're all deeply spiritual all those things are deeply spiritual at least this is how it is for me at the moment and at the beginning that's not how it was at the beginning just you know investigating reality and meditating and retreats and whatever they were spiritual and the rest was kind of shit <laughs> but it's about coming into wholeness and wholeness cannot lack any of the aspects And so you'll go, you go through, when you go through spirituality, when you go through life, you go through different perspectives. But perspectives are not reality. They're perspectives. So I hope this video helps you see how we can get stuck with spirituality. How it can become dogmatic. How we can start defending beliefs. How those investigations can be really useful and if you if you are going for it go all the way you need to forget about the background that you have if, especially if you have some kind of science background you're scientific minded uh, you need to let go of the previous conditioning and approach it with open eyes see if you can see what other people have seen with your eyes you can always integrate later everything coming together but if you keep wanting to fit the new perspective into your old one you will never succeed because they're completely different they don't match in the way that you think they they would match how we would usually force things in so if you come from a materialistic point of view you cannot force spirituality at least if you're going down the road of investigating reality in the sense of Rupert Spira and, and all of those, you were not going to fit that into a materialistic worldview. Not going to happen because they're two fundamental different premises. Now there's other ways that you can go about it where you don't have to go down this road of questioning 
reality where you're just questioning the self. Very powerful again as well. But what I'm saying is that when you let go of your old stuff, you can always come back to it. And you can see it in a fresh new light and you can bring it together in your own way. So if you like this video, then give us a thumbs, share it, comment, and I'm very grateful for your attention. I wish you a wonderful day.